Hello, this is Damir, and here with me is Jamal the Boys. Say hello real quick. What's going on, everybody? This is episode 001 of the Damn Jam podcast. And since this is a complete new one, it's more of an introduction. And we wanted to quickly talk about us for those people who don't know us and maybe those who do know us but want to lower a little bit more. So we will introduce ourselves and tell the purpose of this podcast, why we wanted to do it, because of all the other things. So that's pretty much it. So I would say, Jamar, let's start with you a little bit about you. So uh, why should you listen to me? Um, so my name is Jamar Du Bois. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know who I am. But uh, I started off uh, primarily made my reputation through tech blogging um, and writing articles for The Droid Effect, uh, which is where I actually met Demir and, uh, you know, great people like Armando Fer. Brian Healy. So I spent a lot of time and still do spend a lot of time uh, in the tech world. And uh, Demir came to me with this crazy idea one day to start a podcast, but not about tech. And uh, so, you know, I, as always, jumped on board with my buddy and uh, we started with the Can't Sleep Hangouts. And now we're doing the podcast. And, you know, these are lifestyle podcasts. You know, we, we spend so much of our time following tech that we wanted to kind of, you know, open up a little bit and talk about other things, uh, ourselves, our likes, our dislikes, movies, music, whatever the case may be, and then, you know, bring some of our friends uh, along the way. So uh, that's me and uh, Demir. What about you? Okay, a little bit about me. It was about, I would say, I think it was early last year when I got in contact with Brian Healy and started writing for The Droid Effect. And I really liked the idea. And maybe half a year later, I also started doing um, YouTube videos. And I think a little bit later you came into the game and I know I read an article and I and I knew at that moment I wanted you to be a part of the Droid Effect because we were still deciding if you should join or not. And I was totally up on board of that and, and we got pretty good clicked, I think, so, so I would say. And I'm also a lot of into tech. I do all, a lot of reviews if I can. I blog sometimes, not so much anymore, but I'm definitely way social and we did some a few hangouts on the droid effect and i really liked that but it wasn't frequent enough so i decided i'll do them on my own and since i had you on my side it was the perfect combination because i had someone who do this with me because right now we have eight episodes of the can sleep hangout and that's actually seven more than i ever thought we would do so i'm happy about that but at one point because we those those hangouts are more a tech thing anyways and i wanted to do not just tech but also a, a, a audio only podcast because I, I think we will eventually also talk about tech in the podcast, but I think I wanted to use a different format so we can discuss tech, but also completely different things, like you said, lifestyle things. If our readers, for example, sh shoot me with an email, have a suggestion for any topic, you can either be a part of that conversation or just let do the thing. If we can get any guests, the more the better. I think one guest per episode or maybe two, that depends if we can get someone on board. But that's pretty much the idea because the Hangouts were fun, but they are those multi-person people where eight or ten people are talking at the same time. And I noticed if I, I, I because I hear personally a lot of podcasts myself and all the audio-only podcasts feel a little bit more casual. And that's definitely the purpose I want to do. I want to do it uh, very casual because it's way more something soothing to the voice. And also these audio podcasts are the perfect companion if you are on your way to work in a train or in your car. It, it takes about an hour to listen and it's definitely a nice entertainment if you want to hear what's around going in the world of tech or lifestyle or anything like else. So that's pretty much the idea and that's why this podcast is going to happen with Jamar and me. Well, there's also uh, and there's also the, the demand from uh, our friends, our viewers, our followers that, you know, they, they wanted something a little bit more focused, something a little cleaner, uh, something that they could kind of pick up and take along with them. And, uh, you know, what better than a podcast to do that with? Because not everybody can, uh, you know, sit on their computer for an hour or check out a video of us on YouTube. Some people have different restrictions, different lifestyles, different strokes, different folks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's the other reason why we're here to uh, give you guys uh, the same opinions that you value, uh, that we love to share. Uh, and, and as well as one of the things that Demir left out of his introduction is how his his claim to fame and Demir's claim to fame is his uh, brutally honest uh, tech reviews. 
and uh, brutally honest and picky, I think, is your uh, your punchline or your, yeah, your tag yeah. phrase. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, that's his claim to fame. Uh, a lot of people uh, find me to be more, uh, I guess, down to earth and relatable. So uh, you're probably going to hear that approach from us as we kind of go through these podcasts. Demir is very outspoken and doesn't really hold anything back. And I tend to try to over explain things sometimes. So hopefully we can balance each other out in yeah. this uh, the audio only here. Yeah, but the good thing about the only or only is also because I asked a few people who really like the Hangouts if maybe we should do a podcast out of these Hangouts. But the issue here is they tend to vary a lot of in, in terms of time because the shortest one is like two hours and the longest one is over four hours but if we do audio only we can restrict it ourselves to one hour and also the good thing is we can we can control the quality because we can make sure our sound is good and maybe one or two guests but on the hangouts there are people that maybe don't have the best microphone and the quality sucked and a few people complained that if that would be audio only podcast they just wouldn't be able to listen and enjoy it due to those maybe people with worse sound so that's yeah, I mean, also a reason. Yeah, and that's and, and I mean that's a good point, which kind of takes us into you know the format of this podcast. And I think you know before we before we came here and started recording, you know, Demir and I, I think we had a couple bloopers along the way, <laughs> and uh, we'll share those with you guys one day. But yeah. you know, there's a lot of uh, hurdles, and you know that may be a topic for our first episode. But there's a lot of hurdles to kind of getting a podcast started. And we were thinking of this idea together, brainstorming. It took us a couple days, actually more than a couple days, to yeah. kind of come up even with the name. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the exactly. damn, the damn jam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and maybe nobody, not everyone knows the word game, but it's about, it's like kind of the traffic jam, the damn jam. So maybe if you are in a traffic jam and you think the damn jam again, just think of us and maybe tune in. So that would be also a nice thing to listen about. But yeah, as, as Jamar already said, there was quite some background work we had to do. We had to set up a site. An upload folder, search for the servers, and we have to tag it along. And I'm still not sure if we figured out the sound completely because that's this episode four. This is not a real first episode. We still have to do all the technical work because we haven't edited anything yet. So we really don't know what the outcome eventually even will be. But in terms of what we want to do with this podcast, we want to entertain you. So all the people who maybe just want to listen because not everyone wants to be part of the team but if you have any suggestions for a topic you would like to like to hear us talk about just throw it give me a mail it will be if you don't know the the email is the damn jam podcast should be easily findable I, or just contact me on google plus because we are both very active on google plus you can get us always there so this shouldn't be the issue Oh yeah. So uh, if you if you definitely want to reach out, you know, again, you can find me at uh, Jamar plus Jamar Du Bois. Demir is at plus Demir Frank uh, on Google Plus. Again, it's not really hard to find us. Uh, I find that I think we answer everyone at all hours of the night, regardless of what we're doing. So uh, you can always reach out. We always love to hear uh, your thoughts on. You know, uh, just anything going on around the world or or in your life. And uh, that's a lot of what we're going to cover for a topic matter for the podcast. But when we talk about the format, you know, we're going to try to keep these to an hour. Um, like Demir said, you know, we're, we're pretty famous for having long videos. Mm-hmm. If you've checked out any of our YouTube videos, Demir's videos <laughs> average about 20 minutes. I think mine are right behind you, somewhere between 15 and 20. I think my last one <laughs> yeah, was... <laughs> you know, actually, the funny thing, because I just checked a few comments today of the one podcast or the hangout you did with Armando, and somebody asked why these were so long. And one <laughs> one answer was the reason is Jamal the Boys, because that's, that, right. because that's also the reason why the Can't Sleep hangouts are that long. I'm that's not right. really sure if that's the case, because ours were long always, because I think of all the people who join. Because if it would be just only us two... Or maybe a third one, but we are mostly like six, seven people, and then a lot of pe- things just come up. So, and I think that's a good thing if we are maybe like three people here, we can regulate it well, more. <clears throat> Oh yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna behave and we're gonna keep these to an hour every week. We're gonna cover, uh, if not one, uh, at least a couple topics, mm-hmm. uh, whether it be you know again like I said, world events and such. Um, and you know you can look forward to these weekly. Now we haven't decided on the day yet, 
Uh, you know, we're pretty open. I think a good way to approach this and, you know, again, since this is a test episode, Demir, let me know what you think. Maybe we do a poll. Yeah, that's exactly my thought. I Once I have the first one and we are still waiting for the cover art, I will just throw out the poll when people want it to get regularly because I think we won't record it that day. We will maybe do it a, a little bit earlier, like a day or two. But we will try to, or that's the plan, to release it every time the same day. So let's say Monday or Tuesday, because I think at the start of the week is nice. But yeah, but also you, since you are talking, we do will do lifestyle. I, I I think we are both very geeky guys, and we are a lot of into tech. So I think eventually we we'll, we will also cover a lot of tech here, and not just in the hangouts, because here we have a more controlled environment and can talk more reasonable about topics with not so many perspectives. Absolutely, absolutely, and, I, and and again, we you know we're gonna we have to try to discipline ourselves to. Not always fall into tech, but we will because again, you know, yeah. Demir, hundred percent. We're Can't we're definitely avoided, geeky yeah. guys. Exactly. <laughs> we're definitely we're definitely geeky guys, and our lives pretty much revolve around that arena. So, for people who are new to the podcast, uh, that's it's great. It's a benefit for for you because you have uh, two guys here who I think know what they're talking about so far as tech and uh, and are pretty objective. I think we hate every company equally. Um, maybe some a little more than others, but uh, I think we definitely give them their all fair share of uh, of time. So, Demir, um, we we talked about where they can find us, but uh, what about the uh, the blog? Do you want to tell them a little bit about the blog and how they can uh, tune in there so, if they don't want to have a bo- if they don't have a podcast app? So, you mean the Damn Jam podcast site? Yes. Uh, okay. The the thing is, I that I just set up the site, so it's just more of a placeholder right now. I wanted to see if I can upload stuff and so. But the address is www the damn jam podcast all in one word uh, dot wordpress dot com. It's a free site, so since we we won't make any money out of this, if maybe not any sponsor will show up, and that's why we didn't want to spend so much money and WordPress offers a free site it comes with a few limitations since we can't upload there our stuff itself but hey at least it's free and you can get everything there as well so i I will post a blog post every time we will do this podcast and this will also show up in all every podcast app but if you want to don't want to use the app maybe you can always use your website your browser and get access through that and since we are right maybe 30 minutes right now into the podcast And this is our introduction video. I would also like to talk about how we came into tech. And that's why I wanted to start with you, Jamar. How did your passion for tech come? Um, So, you know, my I've always been into uh, computers and taking them apart. So, you know, I guess I would start with, uh, you know, PC gaming was actually my my introduction to tech. And that eventually. Yeah. uh, So what was pretty much your first gaming console or maybe computer or something like that oh so uh, atari atari yeah, i think that's the atari thing yeah. <laughs> it started for me with atari as well yeah i don't know the number and then it, i think it was coleco vision and at first what i would almost call a real pc was for me the amiga 500 Yes, yes. And uh, actually, mine was, but I didn't really have a first PC. My Mm -hmm. first computer experience was like a brother word processor, Mm -hmm. which was uh, my first computer was actually an Apple IIe at my uh, elementary school. And I and I think I think the first time I actually found the teacher's records by uh, by hacking around with the usernames at the uh, main screen Mm -hmm. was my my first big accomplishment with technology. And uh you know, from there, it just kind of evolved. You know, I've always been heavy into consoles, Xbox, it is, uh, Nintendo, um, you know, Sony. So I've always been a very big console gamer. But uh, as technology evolved, you know, I was actually kind of a late bloomer when it came to smartphones. Yeah, which is, me too as well. Yeah. I was one of the last persons I knew with a smartphone. Because back then, I don't know when I got my first PC, but it was Windows, I think, 95 or something like that. And it was a 200 megahertz processor with, uh, I think, a few megabytes or something like that, hard drive. So it was really old. But I bought it completely as it was. And I, I it, it needed a few years until I got into the whole custom building PC but because since then I never bought a, a whole PC a, a, a factory one I always b- bought my own parts or upgraded or anything like that but at some point because you told you are a big console fan and I had what the consoles I had were the 
like I said, the ColecoVision. Then I got into the uh, into the Sega space with Mega Drive and so. And I, I was never really a Nintendo fan. I was using Mega Drive, and then I got to the Sony PS One at one point, the two, the three. But at some point, because PC games you needed to upgrade, like maybe every half a year, and it was more mm-hmm. the cost of a console itself. And you had a controller, was not. But of course, if you want a hardcore game, the PC is always the best thing. But for a casual gamer like I got at that time, I just did. And you and I know you are still a lot into gaming consoles. But I have to oh, say, yeah. since ever since I started about YouTube, maybe slightly over a year ago, or a little bit earlier, uh, in case. I stopped consoles because doing YouTube videos and started blogging, this took up a lot of time. And mm-hmm. I, I, know, I don't know if people can relate to this because we are doing this as a hobby. We are doing this besides our maybe eight-hour job or so. Yep. So, yep. And if you have a family and then, of course, it, it takes even more time of you because you, your time is limited. And we know that from Armando since he has his baby – he has even less time. So you have to make sacrifices. And mine was definitely, I cut off a lot of TV shows because I'm a big TV show fan. Also, I cut off pretty much all the animes because I was a big anime fan and I know you are. And Huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, co- of course, I'm not anymore that up to date like I, I, I'm sure you are or my brother because my brother, I think, is the biggest anime junkie I know because he watches like pretty much everything and he also watches them always with Japanese voices and mm-hmm. with subtitles. That's what I personally also do. And we had the discussion once in your post when I said I only listen to to the original voices. And a few people bashed me because I said this especially about um, Dragon Balls. And Dragon thing, Ball. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, uh, definitely one episode I want to do about animes and one so also one for consoles because these are pretty heavy even though I'm not that much into it anymore since I don't have the time, but definitely I like to talk about that. And the thing about Dragon Balls is I watched Dragon Balls, the first thing I watched Dragon Ball Z, or I think it was the normal one, I watched mm-hmm. on German television. And what I back then didn't knew, the series was over for already 10 years in Japan, originally, when it was aired the first time in Germany. So I had to wait week after week to get the newest episodes. And you know, Dragon Balls has like almost 200 episodes, the first oh, yeah. the first part. And I tried to get it on the internet to download them from somewhere else. And I couldn't get them anywhere. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why I, why I didn't could get it. But the reason was because it's so old. And of course, all those files would be deleted for a long time. And the case was I watched it in German. I watched it in Japanese with subtitles. And I watched it, watched it in English. And in this case, I have to agree, the English version was the best one because German ones are always quite boring because it's 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 maybe three people that are using all the voices and they are not really that good because I I, I haven't watched any German TV movie or or kino um, cinema movie for at least more than ten years. So I mean, I, there's <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, that's the thing because right now. I I completely only watch English stuff and I don't know anyone here in Germany that it actually does it but I'm so used to it but everything that is in his original voice because I I also watched a, a time I was very heavy into North uh, South Korean movies because they make they made some really deep movies with a lot of hard um, um hard plots and I I just don't want to take anything away from that but the thing is Dragon Balls on Japanese is really awful because you see this, you are known to this Goku with his hard voice and his passion for talking. But on the Japanese version, he sounds like a girl crying. <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah, light. Yeah, yeah, it's very <laughs> light. <laughs> yeah, and that's the one thing. But there are a lot of others because I don't know in which language did you watch um, Death Note? Uh, so I watched Death Note actually in the original and I've yeah. never seen the, I've yeah. never seen the English version yeah. so uh, I just I just love the the Japanese if I see it in Japanese in the beginning mm-hmm. and actually I'd say the same thing Dragon Ball for me was my first mm-hmm. English anime so I was used to the American voice there yeah. uh, and when I saw the Japanese version it kind of took me because I was like wow it's so light you know exactly um, yeah so yeah but now you know most of what I watch is in the original in Japanese yeah, and the, uh, the, man the, we could we could talk we could talk anime all yeah, day definitely. But um, you know, back to you know, like the the, the tech oh, yeah, piece. Yeah, how we got yeah. the tech. Yes, yeah, exactly. how, how, 
But I, I'd say this, how I got into tech uh, was that my passion actually grew once I started building my own computers yeah. and I moved over from there to Macs. And then smartphone, the smartphone market, because smartphones are so personal, um, I'd say the first article I actually put together was for Stefan Svartling for the for his his blog, mm-hmm. and um, you know that was an, it was about an, it was about iPhones, and I started with iPhones and I ended up with Android, and the Android community is a lot like the PC community. You know, you have a lot of passionate folks mm-hmm. that you know are hackers and tweakers, and they you know they love Android, and there's always a lot to discuss, and and that's where my passion started. It actually started with I would say uh, with Android. What about uh, what about you? Uh, yeah, I will talk about me, but I wanted to just quickly ask because I know you are a long time Mac user. But mm-hmm. when when was actually the last time you used, or how long did you use Windows PCs? Oh, I used Windows PCs for up until Windows Vista. Windows Vista was the straw that broke the camel's back uh, for me. Okay. Yeah, they they I used it from like uh, n- Windows ninety five mm-hmm. beyond, and uh, I used to do heavy video editing. Yeah, uh, I used to do. Uh, I used to actually do. I was a video editor for uh, music videos and things like that. So I used to be very deep into Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas. Um, I used to build uh, my own computers to be able to facilitate that. I also had Alienware computers for my console gaming. So I was like really, really, really into PCs. Yeah. And um, once Windows Vista hit, it just I just kind of didn't like the direction Microsoft was going and I moved over to Macs. And I've been with Macs now for close to 12 years. Um, so I've been I've been happy ever mm-hmm. since yeah that's actually the thing because i ever i only used windows up until i think it was march or may this year when i got my first apple the macbook pro retina and i also reviewed that and so on but i'm still i because i before right before that i reviewed a lot of windows tablets windows ultra books and so on and i still like okay i i totally agree because all everyone who knows windows there was a good version and a bad version always in the same cycle And we all know how bad Windows Vista was. Even, even I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was worse than Windows Millennium Edition, but definitely close to it. And the thing oh, was, yeah. um, I used Windows Vista not for all so long time, maybe like a year, because right then it was kind of possible to get a Windows 8 Preview Edition. And I, and ever since the first, I think Alpha, I used Windows 8, which was back then even really stable and faster and had none of the issues Windows Vista had. So I was one of the first that actually jumped on board of Windows 8 when everyone was still bashing it because of the modern UI. And Windows 8 made a lot of improvements, but I, we talked that on about that on the Hangout. I never had an issue with the modern UI. If it's on a tablet, if it's the, the only thing where I could get why people have an issue is if they maybe use a Surface and jump between desktop apps and modern UI apps all the time. But if you stick to one, just one, so use either modern apps or use desktop apps and you should be fine but the thing is also a lot of people like to use the touch screen but i i still don't see windows being as a touch screen optimized system because i also know everyone i know that has a laptop uses his touchpad but on windows i can't get why because the second i have the op- the option to get the mouse i use a mouse why because i'm so much faster because there was a friend of mine when i repaired his pc or his laptop I asked if he had a mouse and he said, no, I never use a mouse. And when I, when I watched him, how he navigated so slow and it's, it seems almost pathetic how long it took for him to do things. And I, I, I took my mouse, I plugged it in and I set up his whole PC in maybe 20% of the time he would need with a touchpad. And then I, I just saw, I don't see why people can do this. But when I switched to the Mac with that touchpad, I see why people could use it, Esther. I still don't use it. I only... When I can use my mouse, I still use because I am just more efficient. Mm-hmm. But especially when I'm doing video editing, I have this app that call that is called Better Touch Tool, and you can customize your touchpad. You can set up hotkeys and all those stuff. And I use both in in both uh, in same terms, I think. And then it makes me faster. And this was when I really know. Um, got to like um, Mac OS and it's a really great system even though I have to say since Yosemite I actually I don't think it's really stable because I, I, I run my desktop PC is a server who runs all the time with an i7 and all my music is all my music stored there and shared throughout the whole house and that one I haven't rebooted or restarted maybe for three years in a row it was running 24 7 
for more than a few years, but I could never do that on the Mac because I have to, every time I have to reboot it because something happens. And since Yosemite, VLC starts dropping or the Finder makes issues. So everyone who says actually it is the easier system, I can't see it because there was a time when I was thinking, which is the better system, Windows or Mac? And I also wanted to do a video about that. But mm -hmm. I, 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 I see benefits on both. But on a desktop, I still would prefer Windows, I guess. On the laptop, mostly I prefer it because of Final Cut Pro, which is a really nice and great video editing tool. And yeah. because I am thinking about, the, there are two things I would like to do in the in the near future. I wanted to build a PC so I could start trying to use Linux distribution so I could test those because I think a few people maybe would be interested in it. But I would also like to have a full-fledged Mac PC for editing. But just for editing, it just isn't worth the money. And that's also the reason why I never had uh, Apple PC, because they are quite expensive here. I'm not saying they are overpriced or so, but I think you would, uh, at least in the USA, can get a way better price than we here. Yeah, I mean, that's. I think that's possible. I mean, Macs are, are, are great editing machines, but, you know, I'm like you are. I mean, Windows has its merits. I prefer uh, Windows uh, 7 over Windows 8. Uh, and that's just simply because I mean, and you, you hit a lot of the points, but Windows 8 for me feels like two living in two different worlds. And uh, I don't like that. I feel like you got to go you either go full Metro or you go traditional Windows. I, yeah, I don't yeah, like but, living. In yeah, both. but please don't do the mistake that so many other people did. I, as I told you on the Hangout yesterday. Just download this app that is called Start Menu or something like that. It's a replacement. And it. Mm -hmm completely turns Windows 8 with the start menu like on 7. And once you have that, you can even deactivate the modern UI. You will never see it. So you won't have to bother about it. And then it is like Windows 7. But the big benefit of Windows 8 is, and most people just underestimate it, Windows 8 is a lot more power efficient and has a lot more extra features and it is a lot faster. So all I can say is everyone who says Windows 7 is the better system it, as maybe bad as it sounds, but is clueless. You have to give 8 a real chance and maybe customize it to get a Windows 7 experience. But believe me, Windows 8 is by far the better system. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's like any other operating system. I mean, you know, you, you go back and you customize it to, the, to make it operate the way you like it to operate. You, you reset your, you know, your, your file managers or, you know, the look of the UI. So, you know, it kind of fits what you're used to. And um, I think that's, you know, that's good advice. If you can make Windows 8 feel like Windows 7 and get all the benefits that Windows 8 provides, then uh, then definitely go for it. Yeah. But, you know, like you said about Yosemite, um, you know, I've experienced, I I think Yosemite right now is, is not, it's not stable. Um, I've had... Yeah, my point, I, yeah. Yeah, I've had apps crash, so I'm 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 100% agreeing with you. I mean, right now I've got you know I've got a a, a backup drive that act, basically acts it acts as where all my stuff is stored, mm -hmm. and it's showing that same storage device three different times. That's yeah. never happened prior to uh, Yosemite, so you know that's another bug that I got to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know. No, I agree because Yosemite, in in terms of design, I think it's definitely the step forward. And one big bug fix they fixed on was the network cap, uh, the network. I don't know how to call it, but so I can see my network drive because I, since I have my Windows server, the only device I ever had issues connecting to that server was my MacBook. And since Yosemite, that is fixed, and I'm really glad about it. But because I only have a 256 gigabyte SSD drive, so my my space is limited, and I try to use as it only for video editing and the rest I want to stream my movies and audio all through my network. And that is now way easier on. Yosemite due to the network issues that got fixed, but now I have the issues that a lot of video files just crash from time to time. So like you said, it, it doesn't really seem stable. And I don't know Apple for that long, or especially um, Mac OS, but from what I heard, it should be so much more stable than Windows is. But I can't really see that because once I was pretty pissed when Final Cut crashed on me, and it screwed up like my whole video. It it got sound issues and so on, and I was a bit pissed. And I wrote it on Twitter, and someone and I said, "Yeah, so much for about Mac OS stability." And he said, "Yeah, you had one crash, and now it's not stable anymore." And back then I said, "Okay, that's that's not the whole reason, but it isn't really that stable as people wanted to make you believe." You know what? It, it, and this is completely separating. And for for the people listening, Demir and I do this a lot. Uh, we're friends uh, outside of the radio show. So we tend, I mean, this is our general conversation. So 
this is kind of what you're going to get when you get the podcast. But you mentioned Twitter. Um, have you gotten into Twitter? I mean, I have a Twitter account, but I basically use it to track news. I feel like I'm not yeah. doing Twitter right. And I noticed because I found you maybe just one or two months ago because I would never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because, because what I noticed, all the big YouTubers, they talk to each other using Twitter. But that's because they don't get really deep with each other. But the thing is, we do. So we either use Hangouts or maybe if you post something or I post something, we do this on Google+. Plus. But I think Twitter is something completely different because, like you said, for me, Twitter is for my news and I uh, it's an easy way to follow the the YouTubers I like to follow because there I can get updates because none of them almost none of them uses Google Plus and I would if if possible like to everyone jump on board to Google Plus but the the weird thing is the more podcasts or hangouts I watch from other channels or sites I see them not thinking any good of Google Plus because I I just think they don't see the social aspect of it because for me all my social all my social connection online is happening through Google+. Plus. I have only maybe one or two persons I actually talk on Twitter a few times, but that's just a brief connection. I, I, I send him one tweet, he sends me a tweet, and usually I only use it for news. But Google+, Plus, in my opinion, is so much more because it is my news stream, it is my social stream, it is pretty much everything from me. And most of what I know from you is happening through Google+. Plus. So that's a lot, something people underestimate way too much. Yeah, and, and, and I agree. I mean, a lot of people say a lot of the professional tech people will say Google Plus is dead. I would say don't believe it. Uh, they're using it wrong. Um, and, and it's the same thing with me with Twitter. You know, I'm like you. I think Twitter is an excellent news feed. It's, mm -hmm. it's the best news feed that you can get because when things happen, it goes to Twitter. But yeah. that's about all I use it for. I mean, even when I share content, if I find an interesting article, I share it to Google+. Plus. Yep. I don't really share it to Twitter because Twitter, I don't feel connected to anybody there. I just yeah, feel like exactly. there's a bunch of people, you know, looking at the news streams but not really interacting with one another. And I know people are. Um, it's just not, you know, the center of, of my social world. But uh, I do have an account there, like Demir said, and he does as well. Um, but, you know, I would never recommend that you try to reach me there because I, I generally don't monitor it like I should. Yeah, that's exactly my point. Because, if you, like you said, if you want to have the most up-to-date news, then you should have Twitter and follow just the right people not too many because i only follow like 50 and the odd the odd thing is i have like maybe i have slightly under a thousand followers or how we would want to call it on google plus and on youtube it's right now slightly over three thousand but if i see i got maybe half a year ago i didn't have more than 20 people following me on twitter just because i never twitter something I, I use it just for viewing stuff. I never really act on it. But lately I got a bit into it and I think maybe through the Hangouts itself or through YouTube and now I got like 70 people following me. I, and I, and I, have, to, I have to say I am, I am a bit, little bit sorry, but if you follow me on Twitter, don't really expect much interaction from me. <laughs> so if, if, you, if you are actually interested in what I'm going to say or my opinion or so, definitely Google Plus is the way to go because that's where I am all the time. And if I don't respond within an hour, I'm probably sleeping or I'm dead. <laughs> And, and, and just to let you know, if he doesn't respond in an hour, it's more likely the 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 former than the latter. He's probably sleeping yeah. because he doesn't sleep that much. So when he does sleep, that's a good thing. Yeah, that, that's one <laughs> thing. Yeah, because since I maybe I mostly never sleep more than two hours in one piece. And the thing is, whenever I wake up within after those two hours, I always and that's maybe maybe that's even a reason why I can't sleep so much. The first thing I do is grab my phone and check if I got any messages. I mm -hmm. I, I think actually it is a bit a part of it because. Because the, the, there was a little bit of a timeout I had when I when I didn't use Google Plus for like two weeks, and it, it was a huge boost in battery life because it saved me so much. But I also noticed my sleep was a bit more calm because I didn't have all the thoughts in my head. Because the thing is, once I post a YouTube video, and I think pretty much everyone who ever asked me something, he got a answer really really quick within a few minutes most of the times because i have my notifications on and when i get a notification i answer and i have to say a lot of people actually appreciate this and they say thank you for this quick reply and that's one thing you can only get from a smaller youtuber because i completely get it i have like maybe 
thousand views per video and three thousand subscribers so i have the time and if i would have to do it maybe i would say i take one hour on a day time for all my subscribers to answer them and i would do it but i actually do it all the time since i don't get that many options but if i would be someone like of course maybe marcus brown lee who gets like I, i i can't even imagine how many posts he might get he has almost two million subscribers then i get it it's just not possible to even try to answer and and i know it because i saw an interview with him and he said back then when he started and had like 100 or 200 subscribers he sent everyone a single personal thank you note for subscribing and answered all the posts and i get it we we too still can do this and that's actually a thing a few of our viewers actually know to appreciate it because I, I see some people commenting on big channels and asking them something but I actually don't know if they really expect to get an answer but because if you have like thousands comments in one video yours will be completely overlooked and that's just not happening in our case yeah and, and again uh, that counts us as lucky I mean and you know, just like Demir said at the top of the of this test episode you know what we do we do because for the love of doing it you know we do it for our viewers we do it for our readers we do it for our friends mm -hmm. and we do it because we have a passion to uh, to do this stuff and uh, you know we don't expect any money we don't expect payment uh, YouTube is the same thing you know I remember when I started my YouTube channel I had no ambition to really, uh, I did had no expectation. I mean, I say ambition. I had no expectation to to get to a, a MKBHD or you know anyone else's level. Um, and you know, it's been a it's been a pleasant experience. Um, a lot of work, a mm -hmm. lot of hard work, and and you definitely don't get uh, the return on the investment as a smaller YouTuber. But you know, those thank yous, those uh, those private messages that you get from people who look at the video and say, "Hey, that really helped me." Uh, that's I think we both uh, is what we both appreciate uh it's it's amazing what a kind word or a simple gesture can oh, do yeah so much yeah yeah because i know it because if you watch maybe some of my one of or two of my changes video i was down sometimes but the thing is of course i would live i would say i don't want to make money with youtube but the thing is i don't want to make money to get rid of it because for that you need way more investment you need way more effort and that's not the thing because right now i see youtube mostly doing my videos to get into contact with my viewers or the google plus followers and the reason i, I would say i would i would lie if i would say i don't want the money but the reason i want the money is to be able to provide more content because yep. the more money i would get the easier i could spend it for new gadgets because right now a lot of times i only spend money on my personal device and review those or have to return it or so because i just couldn't afford to buy a device maybe for 500 dollars sell it for 400 lose 100 dollars if i only get like maybe 10 or 15 dollars out of it so I would get bankrupt pretty quickly. So that's one thing I think a lot of people just underestimate. Because sure, if you get your devices on a big site and you don't have to pay for them, that's, that's the best idea. And if I could make so much money just to make up for my losses, that would be completely fine with me. Yeah, no, and and, and I feel the the hundred percent the same way. You know, um, you need money. I mean, we both work. We both have forty hour a week jobs, uh, sometimes more. So you know, I'm not hurting on a personal level, like I'm sure you're not. But I no, think no. you know, if if we were getting money, if you were making money from YouTube, that money would just go back into buying a new camera or buying a new. <laughs> Demir and I were talking about this yesterday. I've seen tripods for cameras mm -hmm. that were 200 well 186 and then the mirror was like i saw one that was like 200 mm -hmm. for a tripod uh now keep in mind i'm not a photographer um and neither is the mirror but you know we figure it out and so for some of the videos that you guys are are consuming some of the media that you're consuming on youtube those guys are spending thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of dollars just i mean for the camera itself just for the body not the lens it's easily a thousand dollars and uh you know a lot of these people aren't being paid thousands of dollars um yeah. they're not getting views uh, they're not getting enough views or subscriptions or things of that nature for that so i mean we could talk about youtube all day and i know we're coming up on time but again just to kind of reiterate these are the types of discussions you're going to get from this this podcast and uh we've covered a lot uh, and I hope that this gives you guys some insight about, you know, our what we hold uh, to be, you know, personally uh, dear to us and, and, and our values. And, um, you know, we 
don't want to inundate you guys with too much too early, but uh, you guys definitely kind of get the flow of how the podcast is going to go. So yeah, and one thing I would like still to mention is because what I wanted to do because I I always try to do things a bit different than all the others, and the, I I just I just don't want to have. Um, podcast without any interaction because we all do this for the interaction with other people worldwide and most of the others they have guests and talk their stuff but i would actually like our listeners to tune in with us to be interactive with us send us messages say what they want to hear about if they have any topic if they want to be part of it no problem we can invite one of our listeners as a guest every week that's no problem for us as long as you have something nice to say and maybe not the worst equipment of all so a, a, a halfway decent microphone would be nice to have yeah now we're not we're not gonna you know it's it's all about you sharing your interaction but we also want to give the people listening uh we want them to be able to hear you and, you know, uh, we want to make sure that you have good enough equipment. It doesn't have to be, yeah, sure. you know, CD quality like Damir said. And uh, we are doing this free. So uh, we want to hear this is not for us. This is for our, like, you know, Damir said, this is for our readers, our viewers, our fans. We want you to come. We want you to we want to interact with you. And uh, we want to share that discussion with whoever wants to listen. Yeah. So exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. So. Actually. Okay. So go ahead, Demir. Sorry. Should we wrap it up? Because I'm, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm not the best up rapper or whatever you yeah. want to call it because you saw it on my hangouts. But I will try to do it. So <laughs> this was Demir and with me, Jamar the Boys. And this was episode 001 of the Damn Jam podcast. There's a lot of thing we, things we still have to figure out, a lot of stuff to do. But I hope you like this first episode to maybe get a glimpse of what could expect you and what you would want of if it's anything you could actually like and hear to us. And if you like this episode, I, I would like to say review, uh, review us on Stitcher or iTunes, but we aren't there yet. But definitely keep that in mind. So definitely share it with your friends if you maybe think that would be something they would like to enjoy. But once we are up on iTunes and on maybe Stitcher, leave us a review so more people can get in touch with us. So all this kind of community can get bigger and and one last thing is uh feedback 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 like uh like damir yeah, said i mean yeah. we're tell us we, what we've done wrong tell us what we've done right anything yeah and be be brutally honest uh damir's catchphrase no, uh catchphrase i, I be, don't like that <laughs> no no, <laughs> well, no, I mean, no no right right be, be um i mean be open with us and let us know what you think let us know uh what didn't sound right what did sound right yeah you know everything because you know we're sitting here we're creating the content and we miss things you know we yeah for sure and you know, so. if we are completely off and you want to bash us it that's fine with us we need critical comments as well but please stay at least reasonable don't curse anything or that because we don't do it either so i would appreciate it if anything stays the kind of nice way because we do this for free we do this for fun and we want also you to have fun if there's anything wrong with us just let us know and we can fix this so uh guys this has been uh jamar the boys and, and uh frank and we are gonna uh catch you guys in the next one okay until next time.